Welcome back to my channel. Life is Tip Knows It. This is Tip here bringing you whip and chat number 16. I've done 16 of these. Holy cow. Where does the time go? So a whip and chat, if you are not um, sure what that means, whip is um, an acronym that stands for work in progress. Uh, and chat is just me chatting um, as I work on my work in progress. My current work in progress has been a long standing one. This is Doors of Moria by John Shannon. It is um, created by the company Die Moonshop. DIY Moonshop is how it's spelled. And it is a round diamond painting that I really have not made too much progress on. In fact, I believe if you, it's very likely if you've watched my whip and chat from last week, I am picking up where I start, I left off last week with it, I think, I don't know, I might have worked on this a little bit since then, certainly not a lot at all, um, and I don't think this week will be my week of getting a lot of diamond painting done. So not really too many diamond painting updates on that front. Um, I am going to be taking a trip. Uh, I'm leaving for Texas this upcoming Friday. And so I do have a small um, project that I plan on taking with me, a bookmark, diamond painted bookmark, uh, that there will be videos on in, on future dates. But I'll dive in a little bit more about my trip um, later on in this video. Uh, I'm going to start with kind of giving you a, <laughs> an update of my week, uh, the past week, and kind of hopefully find a balance between things that are entertaining and funny and being real with you and honest that this has been... <laughs> A challenging week it's just been it's been a weird week so um, if you're new to my channel thank you for joining me uh, if you're liking diamond painting content I do upload daily videos um, shorts YouTube shorts most of the time themed around diamond painting here and there you might get some guinea pig or skinny pig content or momhood content because I am a mom of a toddler um, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I, um, I love seeing new subscribers. Uh, it truly like brings a smile to my face, uh, as I'm kind of on this YouTube, uh, journey while I diamond paint. So this week has been interesting for a lot of different reasons. I'm going to start with um, what happened towards like the beginning of this past week since I uh, filmed this whip and chat. So this summer I'm taking on being a caregiver for my grandparents just um, two days a week. And so when I do that, I go visit my, my hometown, um, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from where I currently live. And it is, it's kind of like going back to my roots. As I keep seeing that Imagine Dragon song. I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll start with kind of a funny story. Really the theme of this week and probably the thing that I end up titling my whip and chat is um, unfortunate timing. Just unfortunate odd timing for a lot of these things that have happened and awkward, like, like cringeworthy, like, oh my gosh, but it's, it's funny. Um, so one thing that I do for my grandparents is I try to, um, go grocery shopping for them. They just, they have, um, a fridge that they've had for a long time that just stopped working. And because it had stopped working, most of the things in it were, bad. So, uh, we, when the new fridge was put in, I made a big list of things to replace things that were in their old fridge. We threw a lot of food away, unfortunately. And so I, it was a giant shopping trip 
to the grocery store and I like to um, just go on these kind of big shopping trips because the grocery store that I use mostly is um, is called King Supers and I think it's called like Fred Meyers and other places. It's Kroger essentially and um, so I have a Kroger credit card and so I get extra gas points which you know with gas being such high prices that's very appealing to me and so my my mom and I uh, kind of compile a lot of the coupons we have and look at you know I, I'm kind of I like to do that I like to uh, I would not say I'm an extreme couponer but I, I think it's fun to save money when grocery shopping especially with things you're gonna buy anyway I kind of make a game of it and so we had this giant shopping trip and I ran out of time because I, I kind of go back and forth between my mom and my grandparents. My mom's watching my daughter, but I thought it'd be better this time to just drop off the groceries at my grandparents and then go drop my daughter and my mom off. And so we're, I'm trying to like, I drop off all the groceries. And I'm trying to get Denise, my three-year-old, in the car to drop her off. And she's just kind of, you know, in her little world, which is fine. And I'm trying to kind of meet her where she's at, but also be like, hey, we got to hurry up because all the groceries are melting. And my grandparents have this really steep driveway. And she's looking down at, like, she's holding my keys. And so she has both of her hands on my keys. And, <laughs> um, I tell her hold my hand because I can see that she's starting to walk fast. It's really a steep driveway and I don't want her to fall or I don't want her to start, you know, like running out of control down the driveway. And she's in a bad, she's just in a bad mood. She has her, you know, three major attitude and I'm trying to get her to just shift my keys into one hand, one of her hands instead of both. And I say, hold my hand, Denise. And I'm motioning to her to what to do with the keys. And she screams really loud, I don't have a hand, like, to hold. And I look up, and it was just, like, the timing was just so awkward and uncomfortable because right passing by us was this gentleman who, um, I, I'm, I think he's a war veteran. He, and he has one arm. And... Um, he, he just like stared, it was right when he was passing by that she yelled it. And I don't think he heard me say, hold my hand. And so my daughter's saying, I don't have a hand to this gentleman who has one arm. And like, it, you could just feel the tension. It was just like such an awkward, <laughs> like an awkward timing thing. And then like, I, I think he thought that she was like commenting about him or like, I don't know, but I couldn't. And then I didn't know what to say, so I just was like friendly and said hi. Um, but it, it it was just like um, I can't explain now that I'm kind of reflecting back on it. It just was really an awkward thing for my three year old to say, having no context to even the, like we weren't even aware of like him walking by, and like how he interpreted it. Like he just gave us this odd, bewildered look, and it was just. It was just kind of, it was funny, it was awkward, it was embarrassing, it was, I, it, I just, I, I don't know how to explain, explain it. Um, and <laughs> I'm sure he probably gets comments like that, I, I would imagine, like, sometimes from kids. But the fact that we weren't even, like, it wasn't even about him, and he, she just had said that statement at that time, it was just, I don't know. It was unfortunate timing. Um, and then, so, this week also has been kind of laid with, like, stress, ooh, piece of hair flying there, stressful situations that I think have been kind of calmed down or deflected by humor. So, um, the, the other thing that I was in, I was, um, hel I was helping my mom with something, too, is taking her to a doctor's appointment. And we were celebrating that, you know, everything seems to be good and uh, the appointment went well by going to this coffee shop. And this this local coffee shop, uh, it's, 
you can tell it's local and it's it's a drive through coffee shop. However, they really um, have it mastered like with like major change like chains like Starbucks and stuff like how to I guess streamline it or maybe you know and, and that's fine like it's not a critique per, like really I, I won't stop there unless I know I have a lot of time on my hands you know because it just takes a little bit longer they make the drink on the spot um, there's a lot of like customizations and um, it, and that's actually like kind of a refreshing experience you kind of get interactions more with the baristas it's not just kind of like this, pull forward, let me scan this, goodbye, it, it, you know. But it was taking a really long time. And the barista had been kind of not even in the window area. And it was a really hot day. We had just come back from the park uh, where Denise had like a pretend picnic with just someone she met at the park. And it was really funny because I was having a pretend picnic with this other, you know, girl, like, three-year-old and her mom who I just met and it's just funny how the social interactions that are instigated or initiated by toddlers and how funny they could be but we we were really like sweaty it's hot in the car and I thought that the barista had gone you know making the drink and I'm like something stinks in here something really smells and I'm like what is that and then I realized, like, I've been packing back and forth, and I forgot to pack deodorant. And so I, I like, smell my armpit really quick, and then I tell my mom, like, oh, I forgot deodorant. That's what I forgot. And then I look up, and the barista's right there staring at me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And she just kind of smiled and handed me my drink. And we I think we both just, like, um, ignored the fact that I had just, like, announced to her that I forgot deodorant today and that I stink. So it was just, like, again, unfortunate timing. <laughs> but, you know, that was, I think I, I laughed, like, almost all the afternoon about what Denise had said and then what, um what was said then you know and with me and so it was like a good stress reliever um because to be completely honest without getting too much into it it's been very uh difficult for me to be a caregiver um it's just i think my main job i you know i work in a school i i'm a helper in a school and that job Oh my gosh, the, let's see, I'm going to try with my left hand because the uh, tripod's in the way. I, in my main job, it's stressful and it's, it's like a dance of caring for everyone else, but also having that boundary. Like, I think of like that saying about, um, that kind of analogy of when you're in an airplane, you have to put your, if there's an emergency, you have to put your air mask on first before you can help others. And that's you know very true with any any position where you're caring for someone whether it's like you're a mom you're a caregiver you're 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 a wife you're um you know whatever it is and i think this summer i was really kind of hoping to get away from having to be that person for everyone else and really taking care of myself and then I also know that knowing myself and knowing the situation, I this isn't something I could just like easily like morally walk away from knowing that my grandparents need help. And so this isn't me complaining about it. Like I said yes, and I'm going to be true to my word, but it's been hard. Like I I, I don't want to be fake about it. It's just it, it like it's hard. It's hard emotionally. And so that kind of reminds me, usually I do like a quote towards the end of my whip and chats, but this seems like a good place I to just insert this and talk about it. It's like um, the quote that really kind of, like, really I resonate with right now is life's challenges are not supposed to paralyze you. They're supposed to help you discover who you are. And I, I am really trying to remind myself and frame it in this way that these experiences, 
they can be hard and the purpose of them is not to paralyze me or to stop me. It's to help me, humble me and help me understand who I am and you know, what I'm, what I'm getting from this. And it kind of goes into this idea that something that's traumatic or hard, it can, it can be stressful. Like we hear that, that phrase post-traumatic stress, which is true. And it also can lead to post-traumatic growth. Um, and so I, I do appreciate this summer is one in which I am able to kind of go back to my roots and, um, be uncomfortable and sit in this kind of these situations where I'm doing the right thing and I'm trying to do it um, with fidelity and with passion and with love, you know, for your family, but also being compassionate and ha happy and helpful to myself. And one of the, um, I talked a bit about Audible last week and getting that set up again. One of the books I'm reading right now or I'm listening to is called Burnout. And it's been extremely helpful for me to kind of give words to my feelings because I do kind of feel a bit of burnout just emotionally with um, a lot of like everything, the combination of things. So, but um, one way I do that is by just laughing. Like, at how ridiculous things, like the timing of things, um, and laughing at myself and uh, laughing at just silly situations and sharing that. Like, I shared laughter a lot with my, my mom and a lot of people. So, that was um, my week when I went and visited my hometown, and then when we came back, it was such a lovely night on Saturday so Bill and I Bill's my husband we um, we have we do a lot of things together and one of them that we do is we play rock band and if you're unfamiliar with rock band it is a video game that uses like um, like the video game consoles actually instruments so there's a keyboard there's a drum set there's um, a guitar, you could play bass, and you get to pretend to be a band. And it's honestly, it's actually how one of the big things at the beginning of our relationship that I think really connected us uh, was playing rock band when we were in college. And so I really wanted to, I intentionally really wanted to play rock band because I just wanted to connect with something positive that's familiar to me. Um, and so, of course, though, Bill's console wouldn't turn on because that's just kind of the week it's been. And so his console broke. We couldn't play the traditional rock band, but it led to us playing on a different console and playing a different version of rock band that we haven't played before. And so I think that's just like a good example of like, when something goes wrong, it's really easy to be really upset about it, but it also is an opportunity to look at something differently, to try something differently, um, and to just explore and discover things that you wouldn't if things just went right all the time. Uh, so it ended up being a really like an amazing night. It was exactly what I wanted. Just like a kind of a little bit of a fun escape. We played Beatles rock band for a little bit. And I don't know about you, but listening to Beatles music is extremely healing and extremely um, nostalgic and fun. And so that was a Saturday was by far the best day of this week <laughs> for me. Um, and then Sunday happened. And. Sunday, so the day before 4th of July, the 3rd, was um, probably one of the hardest days I've had in a long time. So, if you've been following my channel, it's been a while since I've talked about it, but I have, um, <clears throat> I had four guinea pigs and one of them has been sick 
for quite a while now. And he's the oldest guinea pig I've ever owned. So in a lot of ways, I've kind of prepared myself for the day that he passes. And I, oh, I, it is, I'm sorry, that I should give you a warning. It's a bit of a, this is a heavy topic I'm bringing up with pet death. Um, uh, but on Sunday, we were going to give him, you know, he's been taking this medication, um, a pain medication for his quality of life. He, the, I'll give you a little recap. So, um, he's been like steadily losing a lot of weight and he was a obese guinea pig. Like he was so big and for him to be losing that much weight. Yeah, it's concerning. And it's kind of this balance of, is this just his natural decline because he's older? Or, like, how far do we go in in treating this? And, and um, you know, that balance of go treatment versus quality of life. Like, because um, I don't want to stress him out more. And so we took him to the vet. Uh, at this point, this is like mid-May. And one, and it wasn't the vet we normally go to. And she said... She recommended surgery to get rid of a cyst. And I was thinking in my mind, my gosh, he's so old. Like, a surgery on a guinea pig is a major, like, big deal for a young guinea pig because the chance of infection is, like, super high because they are, they're so short and so low to the ground that when they, you know, go to the bathroom, um, you know, their stomach is, like, right there, you know, like, they... It's, anyway, uh, th our normal vet, the day of the surgery, called and said that he actually doesn't recommend surgery because the chances of him making a recovery from it are pretty slim, or, he, like, because he might get an infection. Uh, he has low mobility, and he'd just be sitting, and he, so anyway, I completely agreed with her, and I was almost relieved, like... Because I, of course, I'll do anything to, I'll spend money, I'll do whatever it takes to help my guinea pigs. Like, they're my, they're like my babies, right? Um, just like a dog for some people or cat, for me it's guinea pigs. And, but it just seemed too extreme. Like, it seemed like it was too much. And so, the plan really was to just give him pain medication monitor is he eating is he moving around is he does he seem like he's enjoying his life like does he seem like he's in pain and i'd say for the majority of the time since then he's been doing pretty well and on sunday it was pretty clear that he i mean he could barely he kept falling down he couldn't get to his water his water in his cage and my husband suggested that it's time um and that's like such a hard decision because like you don't want to do it prematurely and you don't want to um I don't know you don't want them to suffer and so um but it just it it kind of became more clear as the day went on that he obviously is he's most likely going to pass away and he's miserable, and so we made the decision to call the vet and look at the options for putting him down. And the vet didn't call back right away, which makes it even worse because now you make this decision that this is what we need to do, and then they're <laughs> and then they're not calling back. And so we we did kind of some things that we were planning to do that day anyway, like just um, waiting for them to call. And then, like, we got Denise a haircut. We were going to go replace Bill's video game console. My husband is a gamer. He's pretty big into it. I'm okay with it. He's a fabulous father. You know, it, there's a balance to everything. I'm fine with him playing video games because he doesn't do it all day, every day. Um, but then I get this crazy phone call when we're in the middle of... Um, picking up lunch and, you know, waiting for the vet to call. And it's actually a phone call about my grandma. And I don't go into too many details, but it was a health scare. She was rushed to the hospital. 
very um, stressful and traumatic and my you know it's like kind of like when it rains it pours it's just awkward timing um, or unfortunate timing when you're dealing with processing and having to put your pet to sleep and then you get this frantic call and so I'll tell you right away she's she's okay and she's back home my grandma is but at the time that was a lot to um, process right and so we finally get a call from the vet we go to the vet we we um do the you know the whole process which honestly like it's sad and it was hard but it was i i do think it was the right thing to do um and i'm so thankful to have that clarity of knowing that I, I really believe we did the right thing for for him. We weren't keeping him alive because we wanted him alive. We were doing what was right. Um, but so I'm exhausted though, emotionally. And because we had played rock band the night before and stayed up really late. And Denise, of course, got early. So like emotionally I'm exhausted. My body's exhausted. And so then... On top of that let me back up a little bit so um, at the beginning of the week too I didn't mention this my father-in-law came over and we were kind of just talking about this house because he had previously owned it and we were just kind of talking about uh, big projects like one of the projects is eventually replacing the um, 3787, now that is out, um, carpet in one of our rooms because when I turned up the vacuum setting, the carpet physically came up in the vacuum. It's like things like that, and we were just kind of, I was just kind of, um, kind of getting his opinion. He has like a friend who does um, interior design, and I had mentioned how thankful I am that we're not dealing with the basement situation because this basement has had a um, history with floods. So in my, uh, about seven years at this point, it completely flooded because of a toilet that kept running. And then last summer, about this time, our neighbor, who it sounds like has moved, which creates less awkward situations for me, our neighbor had left their hose on overnight and it seeped into our house foundation and flooded our basement last year and that was a major pain in the butt more so working with the neighbor and working with the neighbor's insurance um, to get everything taken care of it took close to a year well no actually it took like half a year um, so we have brand new carpet down here and I was just explaining I, I was just I made a joke with my father-in-law that like Hopefully we've gotten all the basement stuff out of the way, like, you know, like that it won't flood again or we got all that figured out. Um, and I completely jinxed it, right? Unfortunate timing to mention that because uh, my husband said, well, it looks like we have a leak in our basement. And he's he is like very upset. And so when Bill's upset, he kind of just shuts down, like... I think he's he's definitely an introvert and very much processes things in his mind and doesn't communicate with his words. So I knew it was a big deal. I I didn't really want to go down and see it because I like in the moment because he was figuring out what to do. I didn't want to be in the way, just letting him have his space and like trying to mentally process like, oh my gosh, how can how can this terrible day be worse? <laughs> Um, you know, and, um, I didn't realize that it was a sewer leak. So, um, yeah, without getting into the gross details, we are, um, basement, I'd say half of it, the, uh, new carpet that we just put in from the last flood is ruined, um, needs to be replaced. And the because it 
fell on July 3rd. They couldn't get someone here until yesterday, the 4th of July. And then they still don't know the problem, so they needed to, uh, all the terminology is hard for me to remember, but essentially they need, we need to get it scoped with a camera to figure out what the problem is. So the problem has not gone away. <coughs> and so we haven't been able to use any water. Um, so there's dishes from the other day that are in the sink that stink. Um, we can't use, we can't flush the bathrooms. We can't, I can't take a shower, um, all of the things. And they're coming today. You know, with unfortunate timing, I wouldn't be surprised if I hear the doorbell ring now. And I filmed this a little later. But hopefully um, they figure out what, what the problem is. And one thing I'm relieved about is I... I have taken steps to get the pipes looked at every year. Like it's because I knew there was this history of a problem with what happened was like there are roots, tree roots getting into the piping. Um, so I did actually have someone come out last year and look at it. And honestly, like some people would be mad, like, but I feel relieved because I, I, at least I've done everything that I knew to do to prevent this. So it's not something I was neglectful about that I know of. Like I don't, I'm very aware of, of toilet. Like anyway, um, so that's been this like very frustrating. Again, I, I'm just reading that quote over and over again. I'm trying, like, life's challenges are not supposed to paralyze you. They are supposed to help you discover who, who you are. And, of course, having a basement flood with sewer stuff, that doesn't seem like a who you are moment. But it is helping me see, um, it's challenging me in finding a positive way to cope and to, um, think about things. And I really sometimes I overthink things and get into this kind of struggle with what could I have done or why is this happening to me or and it you know what some things it is what it is right it is what it is I can't change this situation I can't change that I have a trip coming up um, where I need to pack and to pack, I need clean clothes and I can't clean my clothes because the water, I am afraid to turn, use any water. And so, and I don't know when this will be fixed. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm just taking a, a, a deep breath and knowing that it's all going to work out. It is what it is. I can't, you know, can't change it. So, um, I do have to kind of get ready for this trip in other ways. Get, you know, make sure that the reservation's there and figure out how to access my um, airline ticket and pack the things I can pack and of course I can go you know there's ways around this I can when I go to to my hometown I can bring a bunch of laundry and do it there and right so it's it's been a challenge to find a different way to look at things for sure and I am grateful that I have things um, like I do have today to figure out all this stuff and hopefully it'll be fixed. Hopefully I can figure out the insurance stuff and feel really accomplished at the end of it and maybe have a little extra time while they're fixing everything to just sit and diamond paint because it does calm me down, right? Like this is a coping skill for me. I love diamond painting. It's repetitive. It's, it's helpful. And I think it, it, they're beautiful when they're done. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I didn't really talk about 4th of July. I kind of skipped over it. This, in spite of all of this stuff, like we had plumbers in and out. It was a good 4th of July. I 
you know, I intentionally decided I'm not going to worry about this all day. This is still a holiday. I'm going to go spend time with Denise and go to the pool. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun going to the pool. We went out to Red Robin, which is kind of our tradition to go to Red Robin on 4th of July. So I think though that that's about all of the updates I have. I still plan to kind of have, to have a whip and chat next Thursday, even though I will be visiting Texas. I'll be in Austin um, for four, about four days for a conference. And you know what? Maybe that's a blessing. Maybe um, the opportunity to kind of just leave everything for four days and just uh, have a complete different focus in a completely different environment will be exactly what I need to kind of um, get more perspective and be able to come back and, you know, continue on my path to doing these things that are, are hard for me to do, like being a caregiver and getting ready to go back to my job and um, being a good mom, right? And also balancing all that and being good to myself, right? That I think is, I'm learning is um, extremely important. And that's where I want to focus my mental energy on. So I hope you're having a great day. I hope that your week was better than mine. And I am hoping for better weeks to come. Please um, wish me luck with all of these plumbing adventures and that it gets resolved soon. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my camera ran out of um, uh, room. So I was just finishing up anyway. I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your week and I will um, join you for my next adventure. Bye guys.